Jazz Tanke, Artisans Editor for Variety and your host for today's half hour with Wolf Walkers. To, with us today, we have Eric Beckman, CEO of GKids, Dave Jester, President of GKids. For those who are unfamiliar, GKids is a New York based producer and distributor of many award winning animated films, including The Breadwinner and Mirai. Also with us today, we have Paul Young, co founder and CEO of Cartoon Saloon and Nora Toomey, co-founder of Cartoon Saloon. Wolfwalkers is, is Cartoon Saloon's latest film from the four-time Academy Award Golden Globe BAFTA and Emmy-nominated animation studio. So before we start, let's take a quick look at the trailer from the film and then we'll dive right on in into the conversation. Wolf, wolf, hunt them far and yonder. Forest is brimming with wolves. It's my job to hunt them down, not yours. But we could hunt them together. Wolves, bears, dragons even. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of them wolf walkers. Wolf walkers? Wait! The ones that can talk to wolves with some wild magic. You can come out now. We can smell ya, you stick. You're a uh, wolf walker. You're a wolf when you sleep. <gasps> what? A girl when you're awake. Oh, <gasps> my mind. Robin! Something's happened to me. Yeah, I can see that. It's flipping great. You're a wolf now. Be a wolf. Are getting smaller every day. These wolves, they're just beasts. Tonight we put an end to this. I promise your mother I'd keep you safe. I have to help her. That is so beautiful. The trailer is gorgeous. Congratulations on Wolf Walkers. Um, Paul and Nora, what was your relationship with the Wolf Walkers folklore tale before the story even came your way? Well, it was very much uh, uh, Tom and Ross kind of came up with the idea. It is based in uh, in, in folklore and especially uh, Kilkenny folklore around the idea of wolf walkers. So, um, you know, kind of guardians of the forest or um, folk who are, uh, you know, wolves when they when they when they sleep and, and human uh, when they awake. But I think that Tom and Ross really wanted to um, bind together a lot of themes that they were very much interested in, uh, which was, um, you know, coming back to nature, finding balance, um, freedom, uh, and the sacrifice that's involved with freedom, I think. Uh, so binding a lot of um, themes that they were interested in uh, together, I think that's how they kind of came up with the idea with Will Collins, the screenwriter uh, of you know, putting everything together for, for Wolf Walkers. Um, uh, Tom, of course, has a huge interest in Irish folklore going all the way back to uh, The Secret of Kells and has always tried to bind, and especially with these three films, The Secret of Kells and Song of the Sea and Wolf Walkers, bind the folklore in through it, but also make sure that it's living and breathing. So what I find most interesting about um, what Tom and Ross have done with Wolf Walkers, they've never been completely bound by the myths either. They add to them and they keep them alive. The same with uh, Keela and Bruno Collet, who handled the scoring of the film. They also uh, make sure that the, the, the culture that they're infusing the work with is living and breathing and growing um, through each iteration. It, it was just sort of interesting that because I think, you know, people often ask like where do I, where do ideas come from they asked maybe Tom that quite a lot and in this case when Tom and Ross started they just really had a desire to work on a project together again as co-directors so they literally did two two lists they did a list of things they love until things they hate which is an interesting thing to do and a lot of the things came up 
of things that they really liked and things they really didn't like. And of course, when you start crossing these things together, you get conflict, which makes a great story. So for them, from the ages of like 11, when they met, they were very animal, they're real animal rights enthusiasts and supporters. And um, so that was one thing. So they kind of wanted to tell a story about when the hunted becomes, or when the hunter becomes the hunted. So that was kind of one of the themes. And then they discovered this Wolves of Ossery, which was outside Kilkenny. This, they st when they did the research, they found this kind of folk tale about the Wolves of Ossery. Um, so it's kind of an interesting the way it sort of came about there. So they were wrapping up, they started with a few ideas and then sort of discovered that folk tale and were able to wrap it into that mythology. Yeah. And something that, that makes Wolf Walkers so visually lush is that it's done in 2D animation. It's not done in, you know, it's not computer generated. Talk about why is it important to keep that art form alive? We were not bound by the medium, but find virtue in it, um, I guess. And, and all of us as filmmakers in Cartoon Saloon continue to discover the beauty and the simplicity of 2D in terms of um, fleshing out characters in particular, or finding the, the, the line between imagination, uh, story, reality, uh, themes, you know, and, and, and things that we live with. Uh, daily and how story can um, help us with the, the challenges that we all have as you know children or adults uh, through uh, through our day and I guess uh, 2D because of its simplicity you just you you fall into imagination uh, much more quickly and you have a deeper bond and connection um, uh, with with the stories and with the characters I think and it's just a continuing um, uh, story of discovery, I think, within our studio, certainly within Cartoon Saloon, um, just with that aesthetic, there's so much to discover there. I, you know, you keep kind of looking outside a little bit, but but there there is so much to discover within the world of 2D. I, I don't think that there is, uh, we haven't found the walls yet <laughs> of, of, of it. Um, so I think that's what's most interesting. I, and you can see I mean, through, through the body of work, that there is always something new to be explored and something to be perfected and uh, you know new people to interact with uh, which kind of creates a, a new feel for each piece of work and you can absolutely see that in wolf walkers how much of you know questions that we've been asking over the years uh, visually with our um, creative partners how that has come to fruition dave i wanted to ask you at g kids what attracted you to wolf walkers well, I mean, we have a relationship with Cartoon Saloon going back to the secret of Kells. And, um, and that's something that I think we've always been uh, really grateful for. Uh, we're a distributor that really only focuses on animation. And so um, I think it was really exciting to uh, discover uh, with the secret of Kells, um, you know, this new studio that had just a really breathtaking and unique style. And then you know, we've just been incredibly honored to uh, you know, follow and be able to assist uh, however possible with distribution and, uh, and things for uh, Song of the Sea and then uh, Nora's terrific film, The Breadwinner, and now uh, Wolfwalkers. So uh, I think Wolfwalkers is really the continuation of uh, this relationship and just, I think, another uh, uh, evolution for uh, Cartoon Saloon in terms of where uh, they're going with visual style and storytelling. I think it's And just watching G G Kids rises over the years. I mean, it's been astounding going all the way back, as you said, to Secret of Kells. Like, what typically attracts the company to projects? Eric, if you want to take that question. Well, yeah, you, you know, again, uh, Secret of Kells was really our first film, uh, first film we distributed. Uh, sort of an interesting story about how all that came apart, uh, came about. Um, and back then it was just Dave and I, you know, there was no big company behind, uh, behind G Kids. I think from the beginning we saw that um, you know animation was sort of underserved in the United States and North America, um, in that there was only big budget animation, and then every now and then a sort of an indie animated film distributed. Um, and people have asked us over the years sort of what our editorial policy is, or but we it's really quite simply that films that we love and we care about um, we want to get involved with, or people that we love and care about, we wanna get involved with. And so both of those come together really amazingly with Cartoon Saloon. Um, you know, um, I, I don't, I love 2D animation, but I'm, we, we do 3D also, and we do films from all over the world. Um, you know, there, there's a, 
um, something beautiful that animation does that live action can't do um, in terms of you know delving deep and um, you know inspiring the imagination. And uh, it's just been a pleasure, an absolute pleasure, to work with Cartoon Saloon over the years. You know, we've sort of had our sort of first initial successes together and have grown sort of side by side. And it's just been you know uh, a wonderful a wonderful relationship uh, you know all throughout. And it's amazing. You know, Nora mentioned uh, before uh, we went live here, you know, sort of the glacial pace of animation. And, uh, and I was in Kilkenny, you know, something like five years ago, uh, to, back when Breadwinner was still in production. And uh, I was there with my son and we stayed with, uh, with Tom and Lisa Lott. And they sh he showed, Tom showed me like early sketches and stuff. And so you live with these films for so, so long. Um, but you know, every every step of the way with this film has just been uh, you know magical and breathtaking, and uh, it's just a wonderful moment where it gets to be shown to the public and people get to enjoy it, and um, and so far the response has been really amazing. So we're thrilled. How long has Wolf Walkers been in the making? Like from when you know the story first came to you to getting it out there for the world to see. Towards the end of Song of the Sea, and as we were we were lucky enough to be able to roll into Breadwinner after production started to finish up in Song of the Sea and then Nora was ready to hit hit uh, hit uh, production on The Breadwinner, which is really good for us. We've finally found our sort of pace now. That was tricky at the start. And <laughs> Secret of Kells finished, we went into a bit of a black hole and then had to build up again for the next one. But we've been able to roll from one feature to the next. So Tom started talking to Ross just then about what can we do together? And that was kind of how that started. And it was that those conversations about what sort of film they wanted to make together. And something that is so beautiful, I mean, every single frame of Wolf Walkers is beautiful. It needs to be a coffee table book. Um, the, the storyboarding of this, talk about how that is divided between your, you know, the animators and the illustrators that, who worked on this. Because if you look at the credits and you see the incredible talent that worked on it, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So there was a, a storyboarding team that took the final draft of the script. I think what's um, different from animation than live action with your script, your script is kind of half the story. You have to take it into a storyboarding process and a, an editing process with animation. You have to do all your editing up front, um, which uh, there are significant uh, changes and, you know, uh, where the story really becomes visual and you, you leave space for all of the visual elements of the film in the storyboarding process. So between that and editing, um, I, I, that's where the there, there's a huge amount of kind of the, the vision taking place. So oftentimes I think with Wolf Walkers, they must have made about um, about five different animatics and, and would have edited uh, you know, in them in different ways to try to distill the best they possibly could out of the story so that not one frame um, is, is wasted. Uh, and that was an ongoing uh, process and then Tom and Ross would bring in, um, you know, everybody that they they loved and trusted to look at the the the, the film as it was um, as it was forming to try and give input and to try and help where we could, and then um, and and so every step step of the way you have it um, being plussed. But that's very much the attitude within Cartoon Saloon and certainly with Tom and Ross is that they want to keep they want because you you can have two hundred people working on a film and that was certainly the case. Uh, with Wolf Walkers and each of those have a creative uh, you know hands and, and, and minds and to make sure that they have a sense of ownership on their uh, with the work that they do and that they all align together to try and you know um, push the vision that Ross and, and Tom have onto the screen using everybody's skills so not just through the storyboarding department or through editorial but also into the rough animation to the the layouts the background painting uh, you know, with, with all of those stages, everybody's brains are 100% switched on all of the time and aligned. I mean, what I find most magical about animation, and I, I really get it when I'm sitting uh, with an audience, is sometimes I just come outside myself and think, this is, these are just drawings moving around <laughs> the screen and people are having emotional reactions to them because of the skill and the talent and because the animators themselves poured themselves into um, each frame and I think between the Wolf Walkers and the Breadwinner, you know, what, what I love about it personally is that these stories, they're led by, you know, female characters, strong girls. How, as you know, for everybody here, like, have you noticed a change in the animation landscape in the way that we're telling more 
uh, female centric stories. And I think that's definitely been uh, a through line in some of our, uh, I mean, our favorite animation. I think it's uh, been a hallmark of a lot of the Studio Ghibli films that we work with. I think Hayao Miyazaki is really known for strong female protagonists. And uh, in uh, the cartoon saloon films as well, I think from even from Secret of Kells, the moment we saw uh, Kells for the first time, uh, the story is centered around uh, ostensibly Brendan, this uh, young monk, but Ashling is the character that steals the show and is this uh, wonderful sort of free spirited um, forest girl. And then to go with the breadwinner, which is much more you know, based in a, a real situation, real life uh, stakes um, as filmmaking sort of meeting uh, the moment, I think sort of demonstrating that uh, there are stories beyond some of the cliches around you know, talking animals or other kinds of things. I think people have long associated, you know, medium for kids. And I think that um, because there's so often a family element um, with animated films, I think it's really uh, wonderful. I think there's a great responsibility that comes with uh, reaching younger audiences if that's who the film is targeted to and really providing, um, you know, kind of a, uh, a narrative that, uh, could be inspiring. It could provide uh, a blueprint through the art for uh, for the audience. A lot of the time, it's down to it. A story kind of drives everything, and I mean, and the story is always one of the the hot moments, like the hardest thing to to get right. We spend a long time trying to get the story out. And actually, on on Wolf Walkers, I mean, there's the characters within the film, and then there's the people making the films. And, and we've also seen a shift in um, in. Uh, uh, artists working in animation and not just artists but also directors working in animation that's cross that's got much better i mean when we were starting out it, it generally was quite a male the, the directors in animation were quite it was quite a male industry a lot of the time even though there's loads of people within the studio that were female or and um, so we've seen that change the, 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 in our studio there's m more um um uh, female uh, um, employees and crew and now more directors as well which is great and it's and I and I think so that that's one side of it and actually in Wolf Walkers it began where Robin was a boy um mm. but the story kind of the lads realized gosh if we're talking about themes of confinement like Robin's confined in the city and she want and they want that character wants to be out wild and free and they miss their they miss their um they miss their old life as a hunter with their with their father. They switch to it. They said, "Well, it obviously makes more sense if it's if it's a, a young girl because back then historically, yes, she would have had different expectations for what her life should be." So that was a great. So that was a, a story driven decision to make her a girl. And then Maeve, Maeve was always a, a a wild child in the in the forest, which was always more fun anyway in one sense. Um, and in Irish folklore, um. The sort of the earth goddess, and there's a lot of mythology about uh, the 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 earth mother and goddess, as in a lot of mythologies, is very powerful. So, um, so a lot of the time, nature is is represented like that. So, I, a lot of the time, it's I, we like to think that we're just making sure that it's very story driven. Um, and I'm, we have another film coming up, which will be entirely different. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's just whatever the director's desire is when it comes to storytelling, that will dictate that way too. Can I, can I just add there, because I, I do think like, it's especially uh, Eric and Dave, when it was certainly going back to the breadwinner and, and these guys coming on board really early and identifying that there was a, that there was space for mm. a story that hadn't been, you know, that, that was not conventional and with a, a hero that wasn't a conventional hero. Um, you know, 10 years ago, it was a given if you were making a film that, you know, was going to take any amount of money and any length of time to make that you had to have a, a male protagonist. Really interesting about G Kids is that they, they keep pushing the, you know, and say, well, why, <laughs> you know, we, we don't, have, you know, maybe, maybe that might not be the case and let's try it and let's, let's do it and let's take a risk, um, you know, with a little, you know, indie company from, you know, a, a, a small country. And, and put in front of audiences and grow audiences uh, alongside it. And for that, you know, Cartoon Saloon is absolutely, um, you know, grateful to our friends and G-Kids for the, the, the long partnership and that uh, trust uh, in, in the risks that we're all taking, you know. You know, uh, Hayao Miyazaki has said, or I think this is a correct quote, that he likes um, female characters uh, who can be both strong and vulnerable. And sometimes it's harder for male characters to have that vulnerability. Um, but I, I completely agree with what um, 
you know, what Nora says, I think in live action, it could be harder for people who are spending the money to take risks in, in female leads. And I think, of course, that's ridiculous. But in animation, I think there's a little more space. And certainly where we came into the animation game kind of with nothing to lose, uh, it was exciting for us. Um, I, I do remember the moment where Robin became a female and everything really did click for the film at that point. I think every, all the pieces started to fall in place and it became much more wonderful to have Robin and Mabe as this really intense and wonderful friendship uh, with whatever else you might want to read into it than sort of the typical male-female uh, relationship and the type of things that you would read into that. So I was hugely supportive and very relieved uh, that that switch took place and it made me more excited about the film at those, at those, uh, at those early stages. So um, yeah, I mean, I, and now I think in animation anyway, uh, there's at least as many female leads as there are male leads. I mean, it's like every film practically coming out has a strong <laughs> female lead. You know, Pixar's on that bandwagon. Everyone's kind of doing that. So, uh, you know, so I think That's we have- That's great. It's almost, it's almost not even a point anymore. It's great yeah. that it's not a big discussion point yeah. so much anymore, that it's just a thing. It's just, I and mean, then kids don't, I mean, my, I have an eight-year-old daughter. She doesn't care. I mean, they're hanging out with their friends at school. It's all the same, really. There's like, they're all playing different games. There is a slightly different, with the way the way they're growing up is maybe quite different to when I grew up. And, you know, so just the whole society has is, is changed for the better in that yeah. sense. So Especially stories are just reflecting that. Yeah. What? Hmm? If you're a wolf, it doesn't really matter. If yeah, yeah. <laughs> all just running around the wolf woods having fun, so I think that's... Okay, so we have an audience question and they would like to know, what has it been like to have this film come out during the pandemic and what made Apple TV Plus the ideal streaming platform to release Wolf Walkers on? Eric, do you want to take that question? <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, well, obviously, you know, no one could have foreseen this uh, uh, pandemic. And I know uh, Apple came on you know, very G kids in addition to being distributor, we're executive producers on the film and we're on uh, Nora's uh, film Breadwinner also. Uh, but I think, you know, Apple came on really, really early and was instrumental in obviously making, uh, having the film made. And now of course it seems like a brilliant piece of planning uh, because, um, you know, as much as there's still um, theatrical life in the film and uh, some theatrical play on the film. And um, eventually when theaters are back open more safely in more uh, localities, I think more people will wanna see this film on a big 40 foot screen with surround sound and all that stuff. Uh, but it's amazing uh, to be able to show the film to a lot of people uh, coming up uh, December 11. So uh, we're super, super, super thrilled that uh, Apple could be such good partners and put so much, um, you know, positive response and effort and uh, promotional dollars and all that good stuff behind this behind this film, um, which is you know a risk for them as much as it is uh, for anyone else because it's not a typical type of it's their first animated film and it's not what you might think of uh, when a company the size and stature of Apple comes out with their first animated film. So I think for them to select a uh, Wolf Walkers and Cartoon Saloon. Uh, you know, was a, a bold move on their part and hopefully um, hopefully one they're happy with. They've been really amazing, the, the amount of, the, the lift they've, they've pushed, the amount of push they've put behind it. And um, and that's really nice because it was somebody, we had a, a, a relationship, Tara Sorensen, when she's moved into Apple and kids and family, and she was always a fan of Wolf Walkers from a previous right. job and didn't even know that they were able to pick up uh, features until uh, we had a meeting. We were pitching TV shows actually to, to Taro and myself and Tom were over, I think during Breadwinners Awards season back in the day, and uh, so it, it so that ever since that sort of ever since that meeting where it says oh yeah well we can we'd like to to to, to buy into a uh, an animated feature with you guys I thought gosh yeah that's brilliant to, to have so much confidence in us and they showed us such um, support and confidence from the get go, and uh, I'm just loving what we're just really. Just, just loving what we're seeing. There's a even just the fact that they were give us a 20 story high painting of Wolf Walkers in 42nd Street or near Penn Station. There, it's just like yeah. that sort of stuff. Kind of even though it sounds 
silly, but that sort of stuff can give a filmmaker a great lift, you know. And then the amount of the amount of planning and strategy around its release has been awesome. Um, yeah. And it's actually the film is just coming out now in Ireland. I don't know whether it, this will be next week, but as as of this week here in Ireland, we're delighted to see that the cinemas have just opened up again. So there's there's now an aware. I don't think we've had as much awareness about a film in Ireland before it's hit the theaters. So we're really looking forward to that. It's been all over the radio. On, on all, all over in the newspapers that it's about to be out in cinemas. So even though 50 people can only go in at a time, yeah. those 50 people, we're going, to, we're going to be delighted those 50 people are going to go into a screen and see it. And it's amazing. It's, it's just the subject matter of the film as well, though, you know, being released uh, during a pandemic. But, the, you know, the film is very much about nature, about balance, um, you know, and, and, and so having a film that's that uh, there's so much hope in the film. I think uh, one critic described it as a warm hug, and I think we could all use hugs uh, these days. And certainly, in the in the in the form of a, of a beautiful piece of animation, we we certainly could. So it is. It's um, it's a lovely celebration. It's a it's a lovely way, uh, you know, to end the year with a little bit of hope. And now that Wolf Walkers is on Apple TV, before we wrap up, can you tell us one reason why viewers need to make time and watch? this incredible film. Dave, I'll start with you and then we'll work around. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, I've, I guess I've been thinking about uh, Wolf Walkers coming out uh, during, uh, during this pandemic and during this time, which, uh, which definitely was unforeseen. Um, and I think like a lot of other people, I've been thinking uh, a little bit more about uh, craft and intentionality. And, and I think to, to go back to something that Nora you know, talked about earlier with 2D animation, I think one of the things that's really um, remarkable about the film is that the style, I think the cartoon scene style is, uh, I think, very uh, angular and I think it's very uh, unique in the world. But with Wolfwalkers, there's visible, uh, you know, rough marks, pencil marks and things left in, uh, which I think really uh, provides like a very um, clear uh, uh, vision of like the human effort and artistry that actually went into creating it. I think that with uh, a lot of uh, CG animation or just you know, live action that uses CG elements, there's this push towards photorealism and how realistic can you get. And I think that uh, hearkening kind of back to really celebrating um, you know, craftsmanship and artistry uh, is certainly something that I've been really uh, thinking about lately. And I think that Wolf Walkers is just like, a, you couldn't ask for a more beautiful celebration of it. Well, what's your one reason? Um, I would say you should go see it because I genuinely think you haven't seen anything like it before. And uh, the music is awesome and the animation is beautiful and you'll fall in. I think child or any audience you bring are going to fall in love with the characters and I think they won't have seen anything like it before. You know, the, the, there's basically three things that jump out at me and I'll just mention the first two briefly. So the art is, is gorgeous. I mean, Cartoon Saloon are known for this amazing, you said it before, every picture is like, it should be on a gallery wall. You have sort of the geometry of the town and the flowing forest. You've got Wolf Vision, which is just a brilliant way to get into those, uh, those scenes and those characters. And the music is amazing also. My mom was watching it the other day and I was in the other room, she was watching on her laptop. So I just heard it. And uh, uh, it was the most I appreciated the, the score uh, with Kiel and, and Bruno Goulet. It was, um, so uh, technically and artistry, amazing. The friendship between Maeve and Robin is like unique and beautiful. And I think is, you know, one of the greatest um, friendships and duo in, in film. Uh, and I think will live for a long, long time. And it shows sort of the intensity of childhood, not just the play, it shows the play, but also shows the intensity of childhood in a way that I think is really exciting. You know, the humans are animals in some ways, where, you know, we're, we're all the sophisticated stuff, but the, the, the film is much less in your brain and much more in your heart and in your soul. And this idea of what it was like before electricity and before cell phones, when, you know, to sleep outside in the forest or to look up at the moon through the trees meant something really, really, really differently. And I think the film does something of capturing that awe and that uh, beauty and that essence of what, it, what, it, what that feels like. And I think that's where the real, the real, besides those other things, the art and the friendships and all that stuff, I think that's where the real power of the film uh, resides. And I think that's why this film is gonna be uh, not just a great film to see now, but a great film to see in 50 years. Nora, what's the one reason for you? What's, <laughs> it's, um, Wolf Walkers is an absolutely beautiful, wild adventure. You know, it's, um, 
it's a it's a walk in a forest where you get completely lost with um, amazing characters and you you follow them anywhere and they take you everywhere. Um, uh, it's it's such an emotional journey. Every time I watched it through all of its iterations, I had a you know really strong emotional reaction uh, each time. Every frame is made with absolute love and craft, and I think you you see that. You absolutely do. And I want to say thank you to our friends at GKids, Cartoon Saloon and Apple TV Plus. And of course, Nora, Eric, Paul and Dave, our panel. Thank you so much for talking with us today. And thank you to all who are listening to the panel from your couch, office, wherever you are right now. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.